In this video, we're going to use the advanced three steps to sketch method for sign graphs. And we're going to use it for a pretty straightforward shifted sign graph, y equals sine of x minus pi over two. So this slightly simple shift will help us get a good feel of how to use this advanced method. All right, here's our advanced method template on the left. And we have our equation and our grid. So looking at the equation, we should be able to see the shift because we have x minus, so you have x plus or x minus within the input of the function. That's a key, um, it's a sort of flag that you have a shift. Okay, so our equation is in the form y equals a sine bx minus c plus d. So that's the general equation that would encompass all the, the types of transformations you could have on a sine function. Um, but again, we see it's just a shift right here within the sine input. All right, so we know we are using the advanced method, so let's go ahead and jump in. And we'll start with step one, find the essentials. So we'll get our base graph first, and we need to identify a and b for that. So a is an understood one, it's the leading coefficient. Okay, a tells us the amplitude, so that's the distance from midline to maximum, or midline to minimum. So it's the same as the parent function, it'll be the same as y equals sine x. Okay, and then b is the coefficient of x, which is also an understood one. So b tells us how many cycles happen, between zero and two pi. So we'll have just one cycle, again, like the parent function, just sine x. And we can also use b to find the period. So to do that for sine, take two pi and divide by b. So two pi divided by one, of course, is two pi. All right. And now we can go ahead and label our scales, um, label our axes, choose our scale. And so to do that, for horizontal axis, we just take the period and divide by four. So two pi divided by four, that'll be pi over two. Okay, and the reason we divide by four is because our base pattern in the next step has four key points and we want these to be spaced equally. And so this is a really good way to ensure that all of your key points align with horizontal tick marks, um, at least as you're plotting that base graph. All right, for our vertical scale, we can use A, um, which in this case, of course, is one. All right, so let's label our axes. So horizontally, we're counting by pi over two. So one pi over two, two pi over two, which reduces three pi over two and four pi over two. Okay, your fourth tick mark with this method should be matching your period, and it is, it's two pi. Okay, and of course we could keep going if we wanted five pi over two. And it'll be the same in the negative direction. Of course, just negative. Negative three pi over two, negative two pi, and negative five pi over two. All right, and vertically we are counting by one. All right, so we have our axes labeled, and now we can move on to the final part of our essential information, and that's identifying our shifts. So C over B is our phase shift, and we see that that is the shift, X minus pi over two. So in this case, it's very easy to see pi over two is the phase shift or the horizontal shift because C is pi over two, and b is one. So pi over two is our phase shift, and it is positive pi over two, because our general template is bx minus c, um, so c itself is a positive value, pi over two. Um, so we should be moving right. And then d, we don't have, it's an understood plus zero. Um, so we don't have any vertical shifting going on with this graph. All right, so we've done the meat of what we need to do here. Steps two and three will just be using this information and putting it into place to get a nice looking graph. 
So step two is to plot our base pattern. Make sure you do this lightly. Um, we will be shifting this graph in step three. Um, so for now, we're just establishing our base pattern, or this really will be the graph uh, that's in the form y equals a sine bx. So it's without the shifts. Um, again, do this lightly. We know for sine that's not reflected, our base pattern is zero maximum, zero minimum. So we will lightly mark or in a different color than we'll use for our final graph. But we will start with a zero on the origin. We'll do a maximum at the first horizontal tick mark to the right, and its y coordinate is the value of a, so it's one. Okay, then we'll have another zero at the second horizontal tick mark. We'll have a minimum at the third horizontal tick mark. Its y coordinates value will be the opposite of a, so negative one. And those are our four key points. So close it out. Let's go ahead and mark the next cycle's first point, which would be at two pi on the x-axis. Um, so this is our base pattern. And notice that this is really, like we said, the graph y equals sine x. Um, it's just removing the shifting. Okay, so now we're ready to move to step three. So let's change colors. And step three, we're going to get our final graph. We will shift, sketch, and then repeat. Okay, so our only shift is to move each of these green base points to the right pi over two. So that's one horizontal grid unit. So take each point, shift it right pi over two. I'm gonna make these points larger because we know these will be our final points. So each green point just moves to the right one grid unit, which is equal to pi over two. All right, so that's our final graph. Let's go ahead and sketch our sine curve. Okay. And of course we know it continues on in the same pattern. And to repeat, I'll show that in a different color as well. All we have to do is repeat this pattern. So let's work backward. If you would prefer, you can move four tick marks away from your first point um, and then copy the exact same pattern, but either way will get you the same graph. So we are just repeating the pattern here, working backwards. So you see there's another cycle of sine. Okay, and you could even continue it for another half cycle. All right, so we have two and a half cycles of this graph y equals sine of x minus pi over two. Um, one thing to notice is we said b is going to tell us how many cycles happen between zero and two pi. And so this is different than how we graphed, but it's still just one complete cycle. It's counting from minimum to minimum. So we see one cycle of our graph happening. Um, so it's just kind of an interesting thing to observe. Um, and it should also make us feel even more confident that our graph is correct um, when all those pieces line up together. All right, so this was a breakdown of graphing y equals sine of x minus pi over two using this advanced method. Hopefully it helped you get a feel for how to use the method um, because this will really help us out with more advanced shifts. Um, in the video description, there'll be some links so you can check out more examples of sine um, and some other examples of other trig functions if you're interested. So good luck and thanks for watching.